Proclaim Christ's coming. Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountains that Christ Jesus is coming. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came to witness the light, and we are called to do the same. Christ is coming. We gain confidence from that assurance. And look, our hope grows even stronger, for three lights are burning where there was darkness. Let's pray. Holy God, give us voice to the wonderful news. You, yourself, are coming to dwell among us. Quicken our imaginations to find new and creative ways to proclaim Christ's coming. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. May the Lord richly bless the reading of his word. Well, this third Sunday of Advent is themed joy. Joy is something that I think we can all wrap our heads around. And unlike a lot of the things we've talked about in these themes, joy is pretty easy to understand. I think there's no bad way to use it. So it's a pretty good word. But the joy we're going to talk about today is the actual event of, of the birth of Christ. The fact that the Word becomes flesh. That gives me joy. That what I believe in, who I believe in, and a resurrected Christ are all true gives me joy. Now our scripture today is uh, Mark 1, I mean, I'm sorry, John 1, 1 through 18. John 1, 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and, through, and though the world was not made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own 
did not receive Him. Yet to all who did receive Him, to those who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, not of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning Him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because He was before me. Out of His fullness we have all received grace in place of a grace already given for the law was given through Moses grace and truth came through Jesus Christ no one has ever seen God but the one and only son who is himself God and is in the closest relationship with the father has made him known the word became flesh Now what Jesus taught and what He did were all tied together through who He was, His, his identity. John shows Jesus as fully human and fully God. Jesus took upon Himself being human, living as a man, but never cease to be eternal God who has always existed. This is the truth behind, about Jesus and the foundation of all truth. If we do not believe this, this, this basic truth of Jesus, of flesh, uh, of, of the Word becoming flesh, this basic truth, we're not going to have enough faith to trust our eternal destiny, our eternal life through Him. John wrote this gospel to build faith and confidence in Jesus so that we may believe that He truly was and is the Son of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Now in Hebrew... The Word was an, an agent of creation. Something that happened at creation. But it was seen through the Jews as the source of God's message to His people. Now in Greek, the Word was the principle of reason that governed the world. Now to the Jewish readers... To say this man Jesus was God was blasphemous. To Greeks, the idea that the Word became flesh was unthinkable. But to John and to us, this understanding of the Word expressed the good news of the coming of Jesus Christ. Do you ever feel as though your life it's too complex. Your problems are too profound, too deep-seated for God to, to really deal with and understand. Well, just remember, God created the world. He created the world. He created you. He's alive today. And His love can solve any obstacle you may face. I think many of us know that. Many of them are experiencing, currently experiencing, huge obstacles. But I know those people have great faith. And they know, they know, they understand that God can handle the complex and profound problems. 
The Word became flesh. Now that, that means God becoming human through His Son, Jesus. And in doing this, Jesus becomes the, the perfect teacher to show us how God thinks and how we should think and act. Jesus is the perfect example. He's a model of what we are to become. He shows us how to live and gives us the power to live that way. Jesus became human when He was conceived by the Holy Spirit in Mary's womb. He's not part human and part God. He's completely human and completely divine. Before Jesus came, people could only know God partially. There was no personal contact. After Jesus came, people could know God fully because He became visible and tangible and touchable and relatable. The one and only Son who came from the Father shows us Jesus is not only the Son of God, He's one of a kind, He's unique. We're called children of God, but Jesus is the one of a kind and has a perfect relationship with God the Father. And we can have that through Jesus. Let's go back to the start of this, this scripture. This is deep. These few lines. Think about what it says. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Jesus is the Word. He came down as flesh with Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Always been there. Jesus is the Word. And that's the joy we feel today and share on this third Sunday of Advent. The, the joy. And beyond that, <clears throat> Jesus is the light. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. We reflect that light. We reflect that light, and at Christmas time we share that light and the Word with joyous reflections of both our lives and other lives, past lives, and what's the future, and present. We got our trees, our decorations, and yesterday the... the the smiles on those kids' faces. Because I was riding along, and there's, you know, the ROTC and the fire trucks and, and the sheriff and floats and people throwing candy. <coughs> Billy and I saw one kid had a bag. It was busted. had so much candy in it. And it, it, the smile on their faces just because we're doing that, that simple act, is reflecting the light of Jesus. Is showing the love of Jesus. We like to give our friends and family gifts, presents. Now, you know, when, when you got kids, that, that's pretty easy to do. I mean, you, you could just kind of gather what's, what's popular and go to the store and look around, and, and, and you know what kids want. You know what cartoons are watching. I mean, my goodness, we had a whole army of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Because that was what was going on when the girls were that age. And I had my G.I. Joes, not them little bitty ones, them biggies. And we enjoy that, and it's easy. But as we get older, and adults, 
And we lose people, and we gain people too now. We all lose people, but don't forget, we gain people. We gain relationships and friends along the way. You know, I think a lot of times that's meant to take up that void. Jesus puts us together. Jesus put us together. I firmly believe that. And we can be more, we don't have to be so flashy about it. You know, you, you can get something that really means anything. Because to be real honest, by the time, I know with my kids, they're 40 and 37. They're educated. They got good positions at their jobs. You know, there's nothing, if I was a millionaire, yeah, I could go crazy. But really, there's nothing that they need. Sarah told me last night, I said, Sarah, you've got to give me some ideas or something. Because I, I don't shop to the last minute. And uh, she said, Daddy, there's just nothing I need. I, and Aaron's the same way. I said, well, what, what do you want? And you know, the older they get, the simpler it gets. And the more they just want something little to, to remember. Since I'm coaching up here and, and moved up here to this church, and she hears me talk about it, she said, well, get, give me something to always remember where you're at, where you're at now. Okay. Pretty sure they're going to be getting Pendleton County football shirts. <laughs> Pretty sure about that. And my son and all love it. Although I usually get him whatever bowl game we're in that year, I'll usually go get him one of those, so I probably need to do that. But, you know, it's just little things. I, I gave my son-in-law one time a pocket knife. Because a pocket knife to me is my dad. Daddy carried a pocket knife always. And he ended up, people giving them to him, and he ended up with quite a collection. I managed to get my hands on a couple of good ones before I left the house and moved up here. And they were always razor sharp, because that's the safest way to have it. A dull knife will cut you. A razor sharp one really won't slip. And I gave it to him. And he was like a little kid, because his dad didn't do that kind of stuff for him, and he'd never had one. So I sit and watched him all day. We have my Christmas lasagna every year. And he sat there and he got out of the box and he was just looking, it was real pretty, it had, the, had the, the, the burly handles and everything. He opened it up and he, and he took, all of a sudden he closed it up and he put his hand in his pocket. And I thought, I told you not to play with it, you cut yourself, didn't you? He goes, yeah, he had cut himself. Being, he just reverted, he became a kid and he just couldn't help it. And so that, that's, that's our, one of our running things. But we've all got the joy of Christmas. And it's just like with the thing that, that, that y'all have done here that we're, we're still doing, the, uh, the, the blue Christmas, remembering people. You know, I thought, yeah, I want to put my mom and dad in there, but what do you see the picture of it? It's from about 1947, 46. Daddy's war's over, daddy's home. They decided to get married, and they went to this place in Lexington that's, believe it or not, still there. There's a little hole in the wall called the Green Lantern. And somebody took a picture of them sitting at the bar and with, you know, drinks in front of them and, and everything, and it, they both looked so beautiful, so happy. And that's the one I want to put in there because that's how I see mama and daddy. So everybody's got their vision of people they've lost. What about the new people in your life? You know, you got to take time to get to know them. You know, I've got a bunch. I've not only got you guys, I got a football team and uh, several of the, the staff at the high school that are new friends of mine. You know, I think about that. The services that we've done up at the, the nursing home that we're going to continue doing. Um, those are special. Those are simple. 
totally unscripted because there's no sense. <laughs> it never works. So just go in there with some songs in your head, <clears throat> say a few words, and say, anybody got anything to say? Well, Peggy will tell you last week I had one lady who wanted to argue with me. <laughs> so I just argued with her. And, you know, then I just started agreeing with her because we need to move on. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> that's the joy. That's this time of year. But this... And everybody, you, you might think, why are we doing this John the Baptist stuff two weeks in a row? Well, like I told you, uh, Mark and John have no nativity narrative. They strictly start at the beginning of the ministry. But isn't it interesting that John starts with creation? You read that first part of John, sounds like you read the first part of Genesis. Jesus was in the Old Testament. Jesus was there. But not in flesh yet. When God said, create in our image, who, 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 are, who are our? Who are we? Somebody was there. But it had not become flesh. Not till this. Not till now. Now John the Baptist was born before Jesus. Because when he went, when Mary went to tell, at the very beginning of her pregnancy, when she went to tell Elizabeth, John the Baptist was formed and in the womb and, and leapt for joy. But in here it says, this is the one that was before me and surpasses me because he was there. He was there at the beginning. It says it right there in the scripture. But now he's flesh. Now he's with us. Now he can understand what it means. And we can trust him because he knows. Those years, those 30 years, we don't know anything about. There's a very, you know, there's a reason. Because we don't need a narrative on, you know, his early adulthood, his, his puberty. We don't need that. If he's flesh, if he's truly flesh, he went through the same things we did. I just really hope, one of my weird little hopes is that when he was walking along and he stubbed his toe on a rock, he had a few choice words. You know, that would just tickle me to death. To know that he was just like us. Just like me. And that's the joy that comes this time of year. That we have to stop and think about. This is not just a baby. This is a new essence of the world coming. It was promised to us in the Old Testament. And it's happening. But he's always been there. Now he's with us. And he's still with us. And he's in us. So the joy of Christmas. Oh yeah. It's joyful. Sad things happen. There's still a joyous time. Because Jesus is there with us. He's part of us. And we celebrate that. But you know what? Don't y'all really think, now think about this, don't y'all really think that what we do every week, not just in Sunday school, I mean in, in, in service time, but the actions and the activities that we do during the week and on Saturdays and, and during different holidays and get-togethers, isn't that just as good? Isn't that Christmas? Isn't that Christmas every day? Shouldn't it be Christmas every day? I think so. Not what we've let it become, but what it really is. There's nothing wrong with all the things we do. Absolutely, I love it. Nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with doing the things that are involved. And we can do things, the th same things that people that don't believe. Because they're having a good time too. 
So let's reflect that light. Let's reflect, let that light reflect off of us, that joy reflect off of us, and show them that, you know, we're having fun too. And we have even more fun because we believe in Jesus, because we have the joy, 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 joy down in our heart. Down in our heart. Don't that make you think of Granny? It, it, it's, it's just there. That's why I love, I think this is a great, you know, hope was a good week. Uh, but joy really kind of brings it home. And the next one is love. You know, peace has its place. We talked about the, the, the peace that passes understanding last week. We have the peace of Jesus because he's coming. We're about to, we had the hope that Jesus was coming. Now we got the joy that Jesus is coming. And next week, when he comes, it's love. The theme is love. Because we love. He loves us, we love him, we love each other. And you guys, and I love you guys. So enjoy, the, relish the joy. Roll in it. You can always take time for things that are going on in your life that are, that are hard and tragic, uh, uh, some suffering. Take a deep breath and let's let the joy of now seep in and put a smile on our face and just get into it. Because it gets even better as the year goes on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.